more slide just to show you an interesting application of these semiconductor materials. And that's in the formation of something that people in electronics call p-n junctions. If you take a class in physics or you happen to be an engineering student, you might uh, encounter these. So these are used in a lot of important electronic components like diodes or transistors, and these are the schematic symbols for them. You don't need to know those. And things called integrated circuits. So let's just pick one of these, a diode. A diode is an important electrical component that allows for only one-way current flow. So current can flow one direction, but not the other direction. And that's useful in the construction of some kinds of circuits. So here's an example of that de device. So it's called a p-n junction because we make part of the device out of a p-type semiconducting material, and we uh, stick it right against some n-type semiconducting material, and that makes our diode. And then we have wire leads that come out that we can connect to our circuit. So let's imagine that we begin to flow electricity through here in this direction, so that electrons are coming in from the right and going out from the left. So that's going to make this side, as the electrons are putting in this side, a little bit negative, and that's going to make this side a little bit positive as the electrons are leaving. And this situation is called reverse bias. So let's think about what's going to happen to the n-type. So I've drawn some little red dots in here to indicate the electrons. So the electrons are getting pulled out this side. So there's a, like an electron pump that's pushing them in this side and pulling them out this side. So the electrons in the n-type semiconductor are going to want to try to move towards this positive side. So they're going to do that. Now as they do, they're going to leave stuff behind here. Similarly, the p-types, they're going to see these negative charges here and these positively charged holes that get formed, well, they're going to try to move this direction to pick up an electron and be neutralized. But as the negative charge moves this way and the positive charge moves this way, eventually it gets to a point where um, the positives and the negatives start pulling back on each other, and at that point, current stops flowing. That happens very fast. So these, when you're in reverse bias, current stops flowing because there's no way to get charge across this area that's been depleted in holes and electrons because they've moved to this side, and then there are no charge carriers right here. No charge carriers, no current. Finally, we have normal or forward bias. In this case, the electrons flow in from the right, uh, flow in from the left, and out from the right. So this side's going to be our negative end. This side's going to be our positive end. So the electrons are going to be moving towards the positive side. The positive holes are moving towards the negative side. And as these electrons leave, more electrons can come in from our wire that we're adding. Similarly, as these positive holes leave, we can pull more electrons out from this side creating more positive holes, and charge can continue to flow the whole time. And so we have flow this direction, but not this direction. So normal bias works, you get current flow that way, reverse bias, no current flow. So useful application of these semiconductor devices.